Alright everyone, welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech video. This time we're going with yet another legendary creature from Zendikar Rising, Lindvala, Shield of Seagate. 3 mana, white, blue, for a 3-3 flying legendary angel wizard. With, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, which that means a wizard, a rogue, cleric, and warrior, choose target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Until your next turn, it can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. I think that's a pretty decent trigger if you can get it. While I wouldn't say it's a powerful thing to build a deck around, we're going to try and do it. This is one of those commander options that I think would be kind of a challenge to build. Kind of like what I did with Zagreus Thief of Heartbeats. We do want this trigger. It's not bad at all. It may not do enough for us, but we are going to build a control deck. She is only 3 mana, so you could take advantage of how easy it would be to recast her, or you could just bring her back from the graveyard with certain abilities. The second part, however, I think is really why you would want to make a deck around her. You could sacrifice her, choose Hexproof or Indestructible. Creatures you control gain that ability until end of turn. So we have something here that can protect our creatures if we have to deal with a board wipe or if we have to deal with targeted removal and we have a much better creature out there than Linvala. We have a way to protect them. All right, so starting it off here with the most boring part of the deck, the lands, we have your generic mana fixing that you would expect to see in blue-white. I didn't really have anything unique to put in the lands. I guess we could say Scavenger Ground is the only real card that serves a utility purpose outside of giving us mana fixing. We can sack it to exile all cards from all graveyards. Ridiculously good land. So starting it off here with, I guess, one of the three creature types, we have Rogues. We have the card from M21, Ghostly Pilferer. I think this is fantastic if we want to build more of a control deck. We have a way to benefit off of our opponent's casting spells. So if they cast a spell from anywhere other than their hand, we get to draw a card. Also a pretty good trigger if it untaps. We have Glass Pool Mimic to copy another creature we control, but it becomes a rogue. It could also be a land, so... That's pretty interesting. And then we have Guafa Hazid. I think a pretty decent way to play control is with some kind of pillow fort strategy. So you are going to see some ways of stopping our opponents from attacking. I think it just fits in well with Linvala. We have Keeper of Keys, another very good rogue. Something that also pairs up well with what we're doing. Because if we get the Monarch, we want to keep our opponents from attacking us and getting that damage in. So that we can keep the Monarch and keep drawing. With that Adele Acquisitor, I think one of the better rogues you could put in this deck. It's really rude when you can steal something from an opponent's deck. You can just leave it exiled, you don't have to play it. But if you do, you have to play it until end of turn. I still think it's nasty if you can take away a combo piece. We have Thieving Skydiver, another thiefy rogue with the kicker cost, but we can just steal an artifact like a Lightning Greaves and equip it to Thieving Skydiver. Really cool rogue, I can't wait to play with it. We do have nine clerics. The hardest creature type was probably warriors for this deck, but we can get clerics and wizards and rogues, no problem, in white and blue. Warrior just isn't as common a creature type. We have Alms Collector just to give us some extra card draw, play a little bit more of control. We have Bishop of Rebirth, going to benefit us if we don't want to have our Linvala go back to the command zone. We could just bring her back with this trigger. Basically a poor man Sun Titan, that's what Bishop of Rebirth is. Geist of St. Traft, another good cleric. Hexproof, so we don't have to worry about that with our Linvala. Just giving us some more attacking power, I think if you can have a 4-4 come into play tapped at a player... It's just so good. We have Grand Abolisher, going to protect whatever we do on our turn, so our opponents can't mess with us. And we have Megara the Diplomat. We want to benefit, again, off of whatever our opponents are doing, so we can draw more cards. If they want to attack us, we can draw more cards if they cast their second spell each turn. So all around a fantastic cleric, wonderful addition to this deck. Mother of Runes again! Our deck is about protecting our other creatures, so why not have a creature that does that better than most? And then we're going to play the creature that Linvala is pretty much the same thing as, with the exception of giving creatures hexproof, selfless spirit, flying 2-1, you sack it, creatures you control getting indestructible until end of turn. Couldn't really pass up on this. It's going to make our board incredibly difficult to deal with. Now we have Teshar, Ancestor's Apostle, another cleric that's going to help us out with our graveyard. Again, if we have CMC3 creatures in our graveyard, Teshar should be an auto-include. Even if you don't cast your commander, you still probably play artifacts. So we can just bring our Linvala back that way. And then we have Weathered Wayfarer. Just to give us some extra lands here, I think it's nice if you can keep up with your opponents. 
We do have four warriors, and we do kind of have to settle for some of these. I think Jazal Goldmane is pretty decent. It helps add some teeth to the deck, so we can pay five mana attacking creatures we control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Very underrated ability. If we have flyers, you know, we could potentially deal commander damage in addition to whatever other damage we can deal. We have a Kedra's Monument, which fantastic card for what we want to do. We want to get that party trigger from our Linvala. Whenever we cast a creature, we get a 1-1 White Warrior, so we don't have to worry about that. By the way, we have other ways, which I'm going to talk about here in a second, after I'm done with Wizards. If we're missing any of these creatures, we do have some Changelings. We have Squad Commander. Enters the battlefield, creates a 1-1 White Core Warrior creature token for each creature in our party. And at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, creatures we control get plus 1, plus 0, and gain Indestructible until end of turn, which adds to the strength of the deck, which is Board Presence. We want to keep it, and Indestructible is a pretty good way of doing that. And then we have Stone Hewer Giant. I think it's... <laughs> One of the better warriors in the commander format. It's an equipment tutor that can just cheat something into play. And we do have some decent equipments, but mostly in here because it's a good warrior. We do have six wizards. We have Avon Mind Sensor going to stop our opponents if they want a demonic tutor. They're not going to get exactly what they want, hopefully. We have Dranith Magistrate. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. We have Glenelendra. <laughs> Adding more counter spells to what we already have is pretty decent. One of the better wizards in the commander format. And then we have Magus of the Disc. This creature pairs up wonderfully with what we want to do because we can just sack our Lunvala in response. But uh, it's pretty much just Nevenrol's Disc. We pay one tap it to destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. So... If our creatures are indestructible, we don't really have to worry about losing too much. And that includes Magus of the Disc, so... Just think about how many times having an indestructible Nevenrol's disc hurt your game. <laughs> it's pretty powerful. We have Magus of the Moat. Creatures without flying can't attack. I think it's perfect for this deck. We do kind of play a somewhat pillow fort strategy, so considering we do have some flyers in here, it's not really going to handcuff us. We do have Wrath Capuchin, Ships, Mage, Flash, Flying. You get to cast historic spells as though they had Flash. So this means our commander, other legendary creatures like Guava Zed, and of course our artifacts and planeswalkers. Now I do have six cards here. I called it the party section because it fulfills the party needs. We have a Me Boy Changeling, so this is actually pretty good. One of the better Changelings. If you need a full party, you can just turn another creature into pretty much a Changeling. Have it gain all creature types until end of turn. So it could be a warrior if we need it to be. You guys get it. We have Birthing Bows because why not just pay four mana and create a 2-2 warrior, wizard, rogue, cleric, whatever you need. We have a regular cohort to give us two. Pretty easy to meet the party needs, get that full party if we have two changelings, because then we just have to play our commander and then one of the other four, and we pretty much got it. And then we have Mirror Entity, pretty good for combat too, in addition to being a changeling, making all of our creatures like XX until the end of turn. We can dump all our mana into that and uh, maybe deal some commander damage. Then we have Shape Sharer, a Changeling can also just become a copy of target creature until our next turn, which is very useful. And we have Unsettled Mariner. Whenever you are a permanent, you control becomes the target of a spell or ability. An opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless its controller pays one. Just to protect our board even further, in addition to being a Changeling, it's a pretty good card. It's like it was meant for this deck. Now going over some ramp here, I apologize, I do kind of do this in a random order, but whatever my mind's on, that tends to be what I go for first. We have eight artifact ramp spells. We have Arcane Signet, Azoria Signet, Bonder's Ornament to draw a card to. We have Felwar Stone. Mind Stone, Soul Ring, Talisman of Progress, and Wayfarer's Bobble. I don't tend to go above three with my ramp, especially if my commander is only three mana. And uh, yeah, I used to play cards like Thran Dynamo, Gilded Lotus, like all the time. They're just too expensive for this kind of deck. We want to get to a quick start, and uh, we don't want to have to wait for like turn four or five to get our ramp going. We do have some protection here. We have Lawless Maneuver, we have Lightning Grease, and Teferi's Protection. Definitely a fun combination with our commander, so if our board is in any danger, we can pretty much protect what we have going on. And uh, Flawless Maneuver being able to cast this for free, saving our Linvala just in case we actually need the Hexproof, I think is pretty sweet. We do have some reanimation to assist what we already have. We have Gift of Immortality, so we can put this on our Linvala. It's a pretty good combo. 
and Sakura whenever we're in danger, Gift of Immortality is going to bring her right back. We have Seven's Reclamation and Sun Titan. I think they're both pretty good again. A lot of our creatures are cheap, our Lunvala is only 3 mana. We don't have to have her go back to the command zone. If we can just bring her back this easily, we want to go for that. We have five counter spells in addition to Glenelendra. We have the counter spell. We have Dovin's Veto, an uncounterable negate. We have negate. We have fierce guardianship, you know, a free negate. And we have render silent. So not only can you counter a target spell, but its controller can't cast spells this turn. We have a couple cards here for draw. We have Rhystic Study and Spoils of Adventure. Spoils of Adventure is more flavorful because it's about the party. Kind of like good old D&D. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature in your party. So if you have a full party, it's just two mana. You gain three life and draw three cards. I think that's pretty insane. Instant speed for two mana. That's good card draw for this deck. We have seven removal spells. We have Austere Command, one of the best board wipes, if not the best board wipe in white. We have Cleansing Nova to kind of do a poor man's version of Austere Command, but it's still a pretty good card. We have Dusk to Dawn, also going to bring back all of our creatures with power two or less from our graveyard to our hand. So I think it's going to protect most of our creatures. We have more utility creatures that are cheaper and they have lower power. We have Generous Gift just to target any permanent. I think it's nice if you have a card that can deal with a problematic land. We have Supreme Verdict because uh, it's a staple in blue-white. Can't be countered, destroy all creatures. We have Swords to Plowshares, another staple, and then we have Time Wipe. We can return a creature we control to our hand and then destroy all creatures. We're just going to use this on our creature so we can save our Lintvala if we need to, or our Glenelendra if she's about to die. Very good card here. I love the usefulness of it just not being a board wipe, but uh, helping you out. Maybe we're not having the best game. We can at least save a creature. We do have one random enchantment. I didn't really think it fit anywhere else. We have Smothering Tithe. We are going to make our opponents pay some taxes for drawing cards. And uh, a Planeswalker, I think, would fit in really well with the deck is Elspeth Sun's Champion. I tend to go with her anyway for Pillow Fort because you get three 1-1s one off her plus one. And the biggest problem with Pillow Fort is not being able to keep up. Other than that, I think she's probably the best White Planeswalker ever. Her minus three is removal, and her alt is an anthem that gives flying. So, <laughs> pretty powerful. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for the deck. Let me know what you think about it. Not something I'm super confident about. It's not a lot of flavor. The strategy doesn't really seem to be anything super interactive. The party mechanic, while it is new, what this trigger does isn't anything super special. But uh, I do like fooling around with Hexproof and Indestructible. I think if you can get Magus of the Disc out there and make it Indestructible, <laughs> that's going to be pretty powerful. But anyway, Void here signing off. Hope you all have a wonderful day. See you next time.